take time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service above. I am ready to obey your word, your word, the living word. In Jesus' name, O oh Lord, the living Word. In Jesus' name, the Word of God, we love you so much, Father. You are our being. You are our existence. We love you so much. Our Father, thank you for dealing with us gently. For dealing with us in your kindness. Thank you for your softness towards us. Father, open the eyes of your children to know and to believe you, to accept your word, to live by your word, and be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wisdom of leading people to God and heaven. The wisdom of leading people to God and heaven. To lead people to God, the preacher must be wise to bring people from sin 
to righteousness. From earth to heaven, you have to deal wisely as a soul winner. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 26, I read verse 15 to 18. The scripture says, And I say, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. Whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Can you see, God gave a commission to Paul, to the people. And this required wisdom. To open the eyes of people to truth that produces righteousness and holy living requires wisdom to turn people from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God requires wisdom because these people are not inanimate they are not non-living things In fact, they are not lower animals that can be controlled. Every animal has been controlled, has been tamed. But it's talking about mean, higher beings with intelligence superior to other created beings on earth. It will require wisdom to lead them out of the state they have settled in. It requires wisdom. That they may receive forgiveness of sins to bring them to the state in which they won't sin again. Their sins have been removed. Their sins have been forgiven in Christ. It's another walk of wisdom. Yes. For them to receive inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, to bring them up to sanctification, purification of their hearts and lives, to live holy is another act of wisdom requires wisdom. So Paul said it in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28 and 29. He said, 
That's Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Can you see? In all wisdom. Otherwise, even the warning you're giving to men will not work. They will hear your warning. Some, they don't respond to warning. You have to employ wisdom to make them respond to warning. In all wisdom, teaching people is just like teaching children. To catch attention of a child requires wisdom. So the children teachers employs the children teachers employ all kinds of materials by wisdom to arrest attention of children and to communicate unto them. So the preacher must do the same. If you want the people to understand you, apply all wisdom. All means from one end to the other end. It means with all strength and determination. Fetch wisdom to cause people to understand and to believe. In this way that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Every man. Many people have been hearing but the consciousness of perfection has not sunk into them. They have been hearing the word, but they have not awakened to the consciousness of perfection. They have been hearing the word. They don't know that they are not to manage Christianity, but that they should live full Christian life without sin. Every day, every week, every month, every year, all the days of their lives. They are not aware. You are to have no fault in your life. That from morning to the evening, to the night, no abuse, no hatred, no lying, no cheating, no pretenses, no, no lusting, no anger, from morning to night, and that throughout the week it should be the same, throughout the month it should be the same, throughout the year it should be the same, and that you should live like that all through the remaining part of your life on earth. This is the gospel we preach. This is the gospel we preach. This is our conviction. And this is the life we consciously, willingly, practically live. This is what Jesus brought to the world. This is what Jesus achieved by the cross. But many don't know this. So it will require wisdom to present these people perfect 
in Christ Jesus. Huh. You are a children teacher. Here, here are you. You have ten children in a class. And there's nobody around to assist you in, in controlling the class. You are the only one there to teach and control the children. Uh, wisdom is required. You must employ wisdom. Because every child is an individual that has his own character. That has her own character. How do you control them and yet teach them? Ask for wisdom. So, Solomon showed himself a wise preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. As a wise preacher, you are presenting your words to people and you want them to understand. What do you do? What do you employ? How do you bring out your weights? Paul uh, Solomon here said in verse 9 of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. What did he do as a wise preacher? In order to teach the people knowledge, he gave good heed. He sat down and taught well through his works. And he sought out, he looked into materials available. He made choice. Choice. Among others. Choice of what to use. Choice of weights to use. Choice of manners. Which way he should behave. He set these things in order. He set in order many proverbs. He gave senses to what he was saying by the order in which he presented them. The preacher find out acceptable words because he's wise. If you miscord your words, you'll be blamed. You'll be counted a fool. You'll be seen as wicked. You'll be seen as ignorant. You have no message for the people. So, he was careful to seek out ways that will be acceptable, not, will not offend the people. 
will not offend the people. And so, that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Nobody can fault it. It's clean. Nobody can condemn it. It's truth to be accepted. Yes, wisdom of leading people to God. To win souls. The preacher showed that you must be wise. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30. Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. To win a soul, to win more souls, you must be wise. You must be wise. Think through. Choose your words. Choose your materials. Make a choice. Have the people in mind. Make sure you are not to offend them. Your words will not be hurt again. Be tactical. Jesus used proverbs, parables, and he truth in stories. Yes, he truth in stories. The people are attentive to the story and come to find after the story is completed, truth appears. Which truth they would have not been willing to hear if it were made apparent to them? Wisdom is required. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and verse 3 Daniel chapter 12. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Wise. Wise. Are the ones that turn many to righteousness. The wise are soul winners. They turn many to righteousness. May God give the church this wisdom. May God give our children this wisdom. May God give all the members this wisdom. In Jesus' name. Yes. At this time, we are going to listen to two videos. To see the preaching of biblical truth coming from another end. 
the satanic end, satanic direction. The right hand, the right hand has been walking. The left hand also is not idle. It is walking too. To cause man to understand. As Job said, God has spoken once, twice, man has not understood. So it makes him to fall into a deep sleep and puts wisdom into him. So it does every way to give us wisdom. A story was told of a sister that was committed to Jesus. But during marriage, she didn't mind marrying an unbeliever. Despite all warning, she married somebody as those who say, I will convert him. I see they are converting machines. When in the marriage, he understood clearly what it meant by do not marry an unbeliever, somebody who is not in the faith, not believing the truth. Don't manage. It's better you wait three years more, four years more, five years more than to go to marrying an unbeliever that will ruin your life. And the possibility of going to heaven might become very low. So the lady was speaking in marriage as one speaking through the window. My sisters, take heed to that instruction. Don't marry an unbeliever. I'm speaking as one that I'm in a marriage because of such disobedience. I'm warning you don't marry an unbeliever. So let's receive, let's receive warning from some people that are in sin and satanism and are warning believers not to join them. Happy watching. I've been receiving a lot of comments lately and messages saying that give your life to Christ. Is God not enough for you that you have to be doing this? Please, Jesus loves you. God loves you. Come back to God. And so on. Well, I want to enlighten you on something that I'm very sure you do not know. As a Christian, do you know how you are supposed to dress and what you are supposed to wear? Let me show you a picture. If you look up here, this is how you, as a real Christian, is supposed to dress and supposed to look like. Because God said you should only wear a white garment and let your heart be clean. God did not say you should wear earrings, you should wear fashion things, you should wear wig, you should do your, your hair, you should do your nails, you should wear fashion things and wear perfume. Because do you know who owns all these fashion things? Who owns all those perfumes? Who owns all those flashy things that you are wearing? Welcome to our world. Welcome to the kingdom of the marines, the kingdom of mummy water. If you did not know, know it now that mummy water is the owner of everything that is beautiful, everything like nails, flashy things, 
chains, earrings, perfumes, mirrors, things that have to do with beauty, makeup. So if you are a Christian and you really give your life to Christ, baby girl, do not complain on my wall. All right? And do your thing as a real Christian and stop deceiving yourself because you are just deceiving yourself because if you are you you are in love with makeup and you like all those things then you are welcome to my kingdom yes this is why most of you are looking for solution you do not know where you are coming from you are christian people that always disturb people like us give your life to christ give your life to christ do you see any of us going to people's pages insulting people forcing people to come to our kingdom no we do not do that but why is it that you christian people you cannot mind your business you cannot mind your business you always prognose and stick your nose your dirty nose into people's business be telling us rubbish to come and do what you that is wearing makeup <laughs> you don't know the bible even most of the pastor wife, this is what they are wearing. They don't know the Bible. They think they know, but they don't know. Because the owner of flashy things, beautiful things, is marine. Mommy, what I have it. So if you really, you are a pastor wife, or a pastor, know how to preach very well and stop preaching nonsense. Tell them the truth. That the owner of all these beautiful things is not God, it's the marine world. So, my lovely people, if you like all those flashy, flashy things, then you know where you belong. And if you do not belong and you wear it, they might possess you because you look beautiful, you look handsome. So, if something like marine is disturbing your life, check it very well. You're going to church and you're wearing our things. Uh-uh-uh. No, no, no. Don't do that. Because if you do, you will be initiated. Yeah. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a Are you the type that love jewelries, makeup, beauty things? Are you the type? If yes, sit down. Let me talk to you. <laughs> you see, so many of you, you love this thing, but you don't know where it's coming from. Most of all these things you are using are coming. In fact, all the things you are using, all these beautified things, makeups, hairs, weavons, fashion things, are coming from the Marie Kingdom. Jesus Christ, in heaven, what they wear there is white garment. If you want to Behave like a Christian, be wearing white garments. Don't fix hair, don't fix knees, don't fix eyelashes, don't use pain, don't make up, don't use anything jewelry on your body, don't put on there. Then you can enter heaven. Then you are a Christian. But when you do all of this stuff, welcome to our kingdom. Many of you, you wear perfume. You are a lover of perfume. You like good smell. <laughs> And you are a Christian. My dear, you are not a Christian. God does not want perfume. What he wants is white garments. Put on your white garment and let your heart be clean. So that you can enter his evil. You wear perfume all the time. And you call yourself a Christian. And you said you will not be possessed. And you said you are not a watered person. <laughs> Do you know who owns perfumes? Do you know what the mermaids, the mami water, the goddess of the oceans likes? It's perfumes. So my dear, don't get it twisted. Accept it or leave it. This is the best dressing for Christians. These are the best gallant sweet dressings for Christians. Don't use perfume. Don't make your hair. Don't tie your hair. No makeup. That is the best way. You see, if God wants to answer you, if you want God to answer your prayer, don't be making up. 
a make up of banjo. No, oh, you don't know, Christian, that all these things you are using to dress all those fashion things, dressing gala, making off, is it last like just nails, and all of the stops. Eye contact, earrings like this, no spin. Don't you know that they are air fire where we belong? You want to come and be dragging it with us? Oh, go, tar, you lie, so. Go and dress like these people. That is the best way to enter heaven. Leave our fashion and perfume for us in peace. If you want to really enter heaven, some of you Christian that carries Christianity on your head like gala and be selling it up and then to the people who are not hungry, to the people who does not want it. Listen. First, don't make up again. Don't put on uh, this thing, go and barb your hair. Don't fix your hair. Don't put on makeup. Don't put on jewelry. Are you getting me? Be dressing like deeper lives. When you dress like them, then that means you will enter heaven. But if you put on beauty things, beauty things like perfume, like oh god, goodies, you will enter a fire. You will enter a fire. If you want to enter heaven. Don't do anything like this. Is someone that called him or herself a Christian, most especially the female, you will see them having this pin nose on their nose. You will see them having this on pins on here. This nose pin is more common in all of them. You will see them preaching. You see them uh, doing past uh, uh, what they call it. Uh, choiring or singing in the church in their mind and they are going to enter heaven in their mind they are Christians not knowing that they are not a Christian because as long as you have this in your nose you belong to marine kingdom because these are marine signs and these are marine properties and also some that has tattoo you are going to church you have tattoo you are from Marine Kingdom. You can't change that. Now, are you the type that wear your earrings like this? That put wear earrings like this? They have so many earrings on their body. Are you the type that have tattoos? Are you the type that put on leg chains? Are you the type? Ha. Huh. You had wonders today. Marine came to preach to you. Marine came to preach to you. Maybe let me grow, come closer to where you are. If God does not love you, will he have brought Marine to confirm his word? If God does not love you, yet some of you remove this thing openly, but in your private place, you use them. Are you not marine? And you'll be disturbing pastor. Pastor, pray for me. My, my dreams. My deeds. Atta, atta. I didn't know coming from your bondage to marine spirits. Now, why are you resisting the palming or the jerry coiling or the attachment? Why do you think that we are disturbing you? Is it not that you should go to heaven? You want to smell what? You are using perfume because other people are using perfume. Do you know who those other people are? They are marine. It's their property. They know where they go to. Are you joining them now? To go to such places? A man was putting on perfume in Calabar. He was in a, a, a commercial vehicle. 
So somebody in the vehicle smell the perfume. When this person dropped from the vehicle, the other man dropped too. I went to him and said, excuse me, are you using this perfume? He said, yes, don't use it. You don't know what is following you. They are deceiving you, destroying you. And you think you're looking fine. These dresses, see the way they dress. They say, are they marine children? Marine spirit children. But they're preaching to you. To them is hellfire. How it came, God must be behind these people by bringing them out. By bringing them out. Missioning the things the scripture has mentioned. Number one, first Timothy chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. I read from verse 8 to verse 10. Here the scripture says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Holy hands, hands that have no ring. Hands of no sin, that have not shed innocent blood, without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, not shining, flamboyant, guyish type of clothes. The one that shows a Christian, for you shall know her by her appearance. Open back, open front, tight one. Those are not modest clothing. Modest apparel. Yes. With shamefastness and sobriety, a woman should learn how to be humble, not bold, harsh, coarse, talking with. Uh, Full authority before your husband. Where did you get that power from? It's strange. It's not becoming of a woman. Go and learn it from Ruth. How she bowed before Boaz with gentle language. Go and learn it. Lady in the society, speaking without shame. Is part of the spirit of this end time. With shamefastness, your body appears. Move on to your private part. You don't bother. This just marine. Do they bother here? No shame in your face as a woman. No shame that your private your privacy is being revealed. That's marine. With selfishness and sobriety, self-control. Self-control. Control the number of clothes you have. Otherwise, he that loves silver can, will not be satisfied with silver. A spirit will take over you. More, more, more. More until your pleasure is in new things. You don't know that it's a sin against God. You have no self control. Has thou found honey, my son? Eat that which is satisfied for you. Don't overeat and vomit. Control the number of clothes you have. Give the other ones to the poor. Are you the only person in the world? So, you can see Marine are talking to you. And scripture is talking to you. Scripture is talking to you. 
in your dressing, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Don't make a show of your clothing. Don't, the braided hair is this flamboyant, um, uh, fashionable braiding of the hair that you will see the person doing this thing after the fashion of the world. You look at it, you know, this person is not a Christian, not a child of God. I'm not talking about churches that are the T.B. Joshua type. We don't want, they don't have any business because they're not for righteousness. So not with braided hair that you do it after worldly pattern. No. Simple. Weaving of your hair or tying of your hair. Very simple, natural. Not carrying fashions. Or gold. Jewelry. Gold stands for jewelry. Which is, and jewelry is a compound word. That covers chains, bracelets, earrings, rings, nose rings, and beads. All these things you, you wear for to present yourself glorious. Not glorious to God. Glorious to Satan. To Satan. They, are the act, they are the attire of harlots. The wife of Hosea used them to attract her customers. So the word is so clear about it. Again, in the book of James, chapter 2. James, chapter 2. My brethren, from verse 1, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of glory with respect of persons. James chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. You can go as far as to verse 9. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, sit down here in a good place. And say to the poor, stand down there. Or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not them partial in yourselves? And I become judges of evil thoughts. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen, chosen the poor of this world? Rich in faith. And hears of the kingdom which he had promised to them that love him. But ye have, ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you. These people who dress this way, gold ring, they are rich people. Do they not oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? You are dead. They are unbelievers. They are not Christians. But yet you say you have been born again. You are wearing ring. What are you wearing it for? It's a sign you are still under the bondage to marine powers. To the point that they say this one is marriage. Is it marriage to your wife or to marine demon? Marriage ring. To who? Marriage with who? You learn it from who? who, who whom are you learning it from? Is there any scriptural example? Or demonic deception that keeps you in bondage to a spirit in the name of marriage. Because you're wearing a ring for it. That's not a commandment of God. God has said, not of gold. Not, don't put on jewelry in any form. See my ring talking now. Yes. Don't put on jewelry of any kind. Not in your hand. Not in your nose, not in your feet, not in your stomach, 
Not in, in, in anywhere. Not on your face. Don't make argument for it. Follow the world. The New Testament world. Holy people from the beginning. Right from when the Lord rebuked the, the, the children of Israel. They were not using it. Right from when the mind of God was revealed. Even right to the time of Jacob. They were not using it. So see scripture speaking. Yes. In Isaiah. Chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. This jewelry. May be used. We are being used by backsliding Israel. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Yes. To verse 24. Moreover the Lord said. Because the daughters of Zion are haughty. And walk with stretched forth necks. And wanton eyes. Walking and mincing. As they go. And making a tinkling with their feet. Worldly people. Backsliders, making impression, having impression over one another, having impression over men. Their mind is like adulterous, immoral. Therefore, the Lord will smite with his cup the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. They put tie some things around their feet to be making noise so that people can see the thing they are wearing, the gold in their feet. That's what they do. And their calls and their round ties like the moon, the chains and the bracelets. Can you see? Chains, bracelets, and mufflers. The bonnets, the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets. Tablets talk about necklace. And the earrings, the rings, and the nose jewels. The changeable suits of apparel. Little time you change your clothes, move to this one, you come and change another one to show, or to put even changes upon your shoulder to show that, yes, I am a star. Not for Christianity. Mm -mm. Not for Christianity. The rings, the nose jewel, the changeable suits of apparel, the mantles, and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses. Glasses talk about, you know, some women will go with glasses quickly to check and clean up, clean up, tie it this way, this way. on the roadside, it's a vehicle anywhere they are, just to, for beauty. Yes, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods. And the veils. It shall come to pass instead of sweet smell, that's the perfume. There shall be stink. You are, you are putting sweet smell, a demonic thing, but it's causing you to stink before God. Let nobody tell you, ah, I smell your perfume. It is our, all of you are together in the marine business. That's why it's commending you. Oh, I like it. I will not dox in the village like eating this crater. So that is the world. 
the Lord has brought about. Clean yourself from this thing. Sweet smell. Sweet. Is that the smell God gave you by nature? If so, oh, me, I have a repugnant smell. Go for treatment in the hospital or take counsel. There are many things that can remove it. Use of lime, use of alum, and many other things. And taking your bath well. Can remove the bad smell. It's not for perfume. Can you leave a dead rat in your house and just be performing the house? Performing the house. Can you do that? Get the matter treated. Get your body order treated. And there are many things to treat it. Take counsel. So that's what the word of God is telling us in Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. Verse 30. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, this is looking for ostentatious clothes. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, earrings, chains, bracelets. Though thou rentest thy face with painting as Jezebel. Use of powder. Various things. Putting various type of things into your eyes, to your face, to your nose, to your all. You tear your face with many strange things. Your eyes change from normal eyes to eyes of eyes that are looking fearful. All these are marine business. The painting you are doing. All are evil spirit business. What are you doing it for? When thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. You know, these are the things you are doing to make yourself fair, make yourself beautiful. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life at that time to hurt you. Thy lovers, you are doing this thing to make yourself charming. To make lovers. To make people appreciate you. Marine. Marine spirits at work in your life. You say you are a Christian. Christians that will go to hell. Because you are not totally delivered from Satan. That's what God is saying. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. The Bible tells us Verse 4. Now let's read verse 5 first. For the Lord hath said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. Ornaments. These are things you put on for beauty. To show yourself beautiful. Charming. All this powder you are painting your face with. All the earring. You are doing your 
your poor decorating yourself with all the chains, the necklace, the rings in your hand. God didn't give you for at your marriage. It's evil churches that give it give it to you. Ignorant churches. Churches not yet fully delivered from Satan. They're the ones giving those things to you. It's not God. See Marine. Is the one preaching it to you now. Is the one preaching it to you. He said, remove those things. Then in verse 4. And when the people had this evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. Nobody put those things on him. Verse 6. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. Strip, remove it, remove it, destroy it, destroy it, remove it. It's not gentle removal and put in the pocket. Gentle removal to go and put in your box, waiting for when you will backslide. Or waiting for when you will change church. My husband is the reason why I am in holiness revival movement. When I succeed to persuade him and we move out, we to a church of wearing of earrings, I will bring it back from the box. Marine daughter, they are so grip you. So that's the word of God. Remove those things from your body. In Genesis chapter 35, from verse 1. Genesis 35 from verse 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. The strange gods, marine properties, put them away, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God. Who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. It is a call to holiness. Go to God. Go and sacrifice unto God. Verse 4. Let's read. Are you there? One, two, go. Let's go. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the ark which was by Shechem. All, not that some are too costly. Neither do they go to sell it. Neither do they did they go to sell it. They gave it when he they gave it to him. He took it to market. Did he t take them to market? What did he do? Bury them on the ground. Get rotten. I mean, get. Uh, what do we know? Rusted. Be destroyed from there. But don't come and pollute the people of God. I'm taking them to holiness. To go to the presence of God, the Lord has called me to go to Bethel. To make a sacrifice for him. The word of God is clear. But marine powers are working on human beings and you too, maybe. That these things are not entering into your heart until you're doomed in, physically in hell. The Lord deliver you. I say the Lord should deliver you. May God deliver other people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me give a little time for people to appreciate what God has done. For what the Lord has done. 
for what Jesus has done. For what the Lord has done. I will sing hallelujah. I sing hallelujah. Unto the Lord. For what Jesus has done. For the knowledge has done. For what we have seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto the Lord for what Jesus has done, for what God has shown us, even Marin is speaking. Hey, oh, yes, I will sing hallelujah. Unto the Lord. yes, somebody, I want you to appreciate what the Lord is doing, has done today. Stand up upon your feet, let's see you. Let's know what is in your mind. Yes. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm really blessed because these things we, we take for granted. We are hearing it from the mouths of the people themselves. You can hear people that are really in deep into marine kingdom coming up to preach to people what we will tell them when we go out to minister. And it's really for us to know that God has been condemning these things and he wants us to get it clearer that these things are completely not for us as Christians. And if you make up your mind to serve the Lord, you must completely detach yourselves from this especially for our young ones who are in the school. Sometimes they may want to, you know, be a little bit of casual Christians, stand on the fence and all of that. It's clear. If you're a child of God, you have no business with these things. They are pure worldliness. Their source is evil. They are demonic. If you do these things, if you engage in using these things, you will be possessed. There are no two ways about it. Praise the Lord. Yes, Sister Josephine. Yeah. So my own perspective, I saw the love of God among his people. Because for these people just to be saying it as if they are drunk, not a normal eye. God wants to use them to expose the secret, the truth. So that uh, I'm seeing it as the end is drawing nearer. So that no one will say, oh God, I have no excuse, I don't know. If you refuse to take from the preachers I sent to the world, what of those people that you lost after them, you are like their things you have, you know, you love what they are doing. So in my own perspective, that's the way I, it's helped me now to know that really the end is much closer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I think me and I will just take a few of you because it's more women I want to hear from. Take it to Mumelinda. Linda. Praise the Lord. Uh, for me, I'm happy for what God is doing because I believe that God really want to show this generation mercy. Um, the time I have my encounter, the Lord told me that he will use a mad person to preach this thing he has shown me. He will use different people to bring this truth to this generation. And then there was a time a madman was preaching exactly what we are saying. It was a video going viral everywhere. People want to give him money. He said, I don't want money. He was preaching something that is somebody that is in the senses that will be preaching that. When I come across this video, many people sent it to me. When I come across this video, I was just appreciating God. And I was praying. I say, I wish people who we believe it because there are some people who say, oh, they just dramatize it. It's just, they are just doing it for money. As what many people were saying, oh, Sister Linda just wants to be rich, saying she die and come back. It's just a way of making money. 
So that has been my prayer. One of our sisters told us that when you send it to our siblings, the siblings said, do you believe all this jargon? I bet leave us alone. So I don't really know, but just that I pity this generation because as what uh, Sister Josephine is saying here, I don't know what anybody that would die, what they would tell God now because God has done it all in the mouth of even those that are sinners. And you can hear what the first woman was saying that why she's doing this is because these Christians will go to her page and be bombarding her. God will give your life to Jesus. Maybe she's doing her own witchcraft on the internet. Some of the Christians will go there. This thing you are doing is bad. Repent. That's why she should now decided to come out. You that like telling me I should repent, give my life to Jesus. You don't even know you. You are not a Christian. So it's something that have provoked them to come out like this. And it's part of God's wisdom. Because truly on the internet, you see all these unrighteous people that they claim to be a Christian, be condemning people, be condemning, give your life to God online. When they themselves have so many things to correct in their lives. So I'm seeing it as a way that God is doing. And as for we, children of God that have known this, this truth, is for us to be sober. Although some people, like I had one of our former women leader, now she's putting on attachment, even telling some people, say, well, we are in, we are in, I was blind before. A former woman leader, a woman leader of a state, now she's not in her anymore. She's putting on attachment, and she's telling people that they are, now, they are now free. They were in prison before. So I'm just pleading with us that are here. Maybe because of all remorse, that's why you are compressed. But I want you to know that even if you are not here, these things, I used to tell my daughter, I said, see, even if you grow old in the 60 year, or maybe mommy and daddy, they die or whatever thing, I want to tell you, the day you put this thing on, you will never go to heaven. Even if you live for 100 years in this world, the day you put this thing, this thing will never give you heaven. So it is not that I'm inside or remote. That's why I'm doing like this. Even if you are out of or remote or you find yourself inside this world, the day you put on this thing, you and God, you are far off. And anytime you die, even if you be the richest woman or richest man, you die with this thing, no heaven for you. So let all of us just know this to be in our mind that anywhere we find ourselves tomorrow, if you go like this way, you will never see God. That is the center. Uh, give to our sister there. Now that shows you all the bishops that are wearing yeah. these things, wearing jewelry, all of them. None of them is going to see heaven. None of them. All the evangelists, white, black, whichever color, women, man, ring, forget heaven. Forget it. Forget it's as costly as that. Eight people were redeemed in the days of Noah. Fewer people will make it to heaven because of stubbornness. And you, you are where this thing is being shown you in all wisdom. Yes, let's listen to our sister. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for this message that. This some, somebody sent it to my WhatsApp, and when I come to know that this kind of life, that is, this is what I was doing before, and these are the property I was using. Even when she mentioned bleaching and every other thing, she, I know that this is what I was doing. When I saw the message, I have to go and get data. I have many of them inside my phone. I have to start sending this message. I just I say, I want everybody to get this message. And when I come to understand that, we find out that when somebody is dressed with all this attire, you find out that, ah, you're looking good. What are you appreciating the person? What are you telling the person? Putting the bleaching, all the, all the earring all over from the ear to her nose. You will tell her, ah, you're looking beautiful. I say, ah, when I find that I discovered it myself, I say, ah, I cannot tell you you're looking beautiful. My sister, I was even worse than you. You did not bleach. Because the kind of bleaching you're doing now, you're looking as if you're, you're burned. Your body is burned. Your flesh like this, you'll be looking black. Your nails will be looking black. You do not bleach. When I bleach, I look like as if somebody that is possessed. If I'm coming on the street, me, I'll be seen as if I'm looking beautiful. But when I saw this, this video, somebody sent it to me. I now said, ah, you see, this person is, you want me to more preach the more to dress with my Mera Makadi more, to cover my hair the more, 
and I use it on my WhatsApp that I would say, I want to appear on the WhatsApp and the Facebook so that when I send this message, which you say, ah, we know this person. So I use this message, I send it to as many that I can be able to send. I say, I've not even started. I have to get more data to be sending this message. You say, ah, Sister Sarah, you are the one that sent this message. I say, I'm the one. I send it that so that you will know that let's not be self as if I did not tell you. I'm telling you and I still forward this message to you. And she's literally telling us that as you're, you're dressing like this, look at how a Christian need to dress. She was still emphasizing in us. Sometimes we even go to market, even before mommy started emphasizing on this thing for us. If you want to buy something in the market, make sure, even shoe, it's something that is glittering. Me, they bring it, they purposely bring it to me. If I bought it, I will remove it. They say, see her, in my working place, they do it, as they do it purposely. They say, if you, buy, if you give Auntie Sarah this thing now, she will, I will buy it. But the next minute, you will see me removing the stones. I tell you, I'm not a partaker. So there's a kind of life that you need to separate yourself. When they see you, even in WhatsApp, on Facebook, not tomorrow you will change the picture that you were, be, you were in the world before. You started telling people, this is where I was looking before. It's better for you to look ugly, old now. And let the world know that if you send this kind of message to them, they will know that this person you have sent this message to them, she's not into that kind of life. I want to appreciate God because this message wants to go vital to make us to understand that if you're standing in your closet, you know that you are not a partaker of this, this uh, property that this man is sending. But me, I just made up my mind. I say I'm going to get more data because I'm sending it to them. Amen. Man, woman, I'm sending it to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for what our ears are hearing. In fact, as I seated here when I was hearing this one, even when the lady was mentioning to dress like deeper life, I was just weeping inside my heart. And I said, God, visit my church. Because I remember this thing, there is no more emphasis the way it is in Hore more here. When we were in where I come from, I remember my be daughter very came free to call the name and don't be hiding. There's no time for that again. Okay. So uh, my daughter went out. I sent her to the market. She came back and was really welling and was not happy and said, Kai. The church has gone far. And I asked her what. She said she met one girl that we are in children's church together. She met her with all the jewelries and the girl looks somehow. She jumped her and said, ah, are you not a uh, sister so-and-so? The girl answered. She said, what happened to you? She started narrating that uh, I met my youth leader. I told him to explain to me what is really uh, in earrings, why are the palace not wearing earrings? He couldn't tell him, giving me any answer. So because of it, if the, the, there is no reason, it is only the doctrine of the palace, why should I be suffering myself? I join others. And she said, she stood there and then opened pages and pages of the scripture and told her all these things are in the Bible. And if you dress like this, you won't make heaven. And the girl said, if I was told, I wouldn't have gone into this. So what I'm saying now is that a lot of youth, even in deeper life, so many of them have gone into dressing terribly. In the church where I was before, because on Sunday I used to visit my church, I will just be looking. The youth before that we will even talk to, they are wearing mini. They hardly sit down. And nobody questioned them. So what I'm saying is that I'm just happy that Thank God, God has risen her and mom. Who has it? Somebody look at me and look at my granddaughter and say, ah, they didn't perforate her ear, ear so. I said, ah, you didn't look at the mother and you are talking of the daughter. She said, eh, big girl like this. I said, we are going to heaven. Praise the Lord. My stepmother came and stayed with me. And I was putting the Rika's uh, messages to her. The one that is being interpreted to house her. And she will just be listening. So before you know, she removed all those things and threw away. And uh, she will be telling me, how will I do for my remaining children to hear this thing? Because they won't go to heaven. An old woman, 
And I was so happy that she took the truth. And even when she went back to the grand, to the daughter, the daughter, she will, uh, they do, in the daughter's, uh, her granddaughter's uh, wedding, they try to they let her wear jewelry. She said, no, man of God, say anybody that wear this one will not make heaven. And she insisted and refused. And she just, the day I attended the wedding, she appeared natural and I was so happy within me. And uh, we, even herself, she said, I am not hearing those messages that I was hearing in your house. Anytime they put television, it's people that are carrying gun or they are carrying knife to fight that I'm seeing. And I keep on praying for her, thinking how to carry her back to myself so that she will hold firm. We thank God for the church. The Lord will help us. We will reach out for people in Jesus' name. Bro, Ebenezer. I want to thank God for this message we have had this morning. Um, I want to really appreciate God for holiness of every ministry. I will say most of these things that um, these doctrines that we up, uphold in holiness of our ministry, like um, the doctrine of uh, um, Christian dressing, modesty, and the rest of them. Mo there are churches who believe in holiness, who don't use these things. Like you see people, some members of uh, Assemblies of God today, who don't even wear earrings and cannot give scriptural proof to these things. Like deeper life and so many of them. And I remember the scripture said that the Lord will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I know that there are people even today who have backslidden, turned away from the faith, who have gone into all these jewelries and all this ornament and the rest of them. And uh, the Lord is using, if the Lord can use and ask to speak to a prophet, you know, I believe the Lord is using this lady who says she's from the marine kingdom boldly and confidently testifying of where she's coming from, you know, to speak to us. It is for some of us who are still here and who are still having doubts about this thing, that these things are the truth of God's word. And thank God we are in a place where the scripture is open to us as well. We are reading them from the scriptures. I thank God that this morning still went back to some of these scriptures, passages, and read them out to us. They are very, very clear. We don't need any other uh, reason or any other proof to these things. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Pastor Okosa. Hallelujah. For me, brethren, it's a big shock to me because I never believed that these marine people can come out openly to declare to all the people, say, leave our property for us. They didn't show words. Say, why are you prognosing? <laughs> That's what they say. The woman said, why are you prognosing? Are we coming to you people to, to, to ask of your own? Even pastors' wives are dressing like this. What other message are we looking for this end time? Thank God that we have gotten it before now. They are not preaching to us for the first time. We have already had it. We have already received it. But this is a confirmation again that what we are receiving here is original. May the Lord encourage our heart and bring more out. Amen. So that the people will change in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to appreciate Daddy for bringing this thing out. I normally ask the people, go to other altars and know whether you can see things uh, like this soon. They are always hiding it from people because they don't want the people to know that the Bible has spoken about this thing. And so we want to appreciate God today. I think today is a big service. So God be the glory in Jesus' name. There's no time for the rest of you. Let's rise up and worship. For what the Lord has done, we'll sing hallelujah. For what Jesus has done. For what the Lord has done, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing hallelujah unto the Lord. For what Jesus has done, for what the Lord has done, for what Jesus has done, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing hallelujah. 
eternal, eternal life. Eternal. Since you want to live eternal life, God is telling you the truths of eternal life. Eternal, sing eternal life. That is why these truths, the Lord makes them known to you. Receive them if you want to live eternal life. Eternal, sing eternal life. To live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non denominational ministry given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings and productions, and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 081-69-02-39-47, 080-56-83-43-23. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah Jesus I believe in Oh my.
I believe in you. Believe you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I
came from heaven You died for my sins You purchased me with your blood You are my Lord and my Savior Sing